Have you ever felt like you've just lost yourself a long time ago? Like from the moment you wake up in the morning to the moment you put your head on the pillow, life has just become routine? Maybe you've stopped caring at some point, or maybe you just don't even know what to do to get out of this. Maybe it just kind of lulled you into a trance that even just right now, this is only making you wake up in some way. Maybe you're just spending time keeping things in order or just surviving in some way. Maybe you're cleaning your house, you're shuttling people around, you're really living in accordance with other people's demands or interests or values. And so today I'm gonna to share with you a phrase that has supported me and thousands of people I've worked with in reclaiming their lives back. And it's more important than ever right now with the overwhelm of the state of the world with the wars that are going on and the economy seeming to be in free fall or inflation happening or concerns still about COVID or climate change. And um, so it's more important than ever to begin to realize how to protect your peace. So today I'm gonna to talk about why that's so important and how you can begin doing it for yourself. If you're new here, then my name is Dr. Elisha Goldstein. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm the founder of the Mindful Living Collective and creator of a breakthrough mental health accelerator program called Uncover the Power Within. If you're interested in learning how to regain control over your mind and your life, then go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Okay, I'm going to share with you a quote, and then we're going to get into seven things that I think can be really supportive for you in protecting your peace. And this is from someone who's anonymous, and they said, Peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. And that's important. Peace doesn't mean the absence of challenge. It just means that we're able to move through with a greater sense of heartfulness and grace. Okay, so you know and I know, companies have spent tens of billions of dollars vying for our attention. That's usually to sell ads on their website or to sell certain products. If it's the media, then it's to sell, it's, it's using news or the negativity of news or an imbalance of negativity of the news to be able to sell their ads. Or maybe it's a company showing us that we're not okay unless we have their particular product, sending us into a feeling of deficiency in some way or not feeling okay. And so uh, it's more important than ever to learn how to be proactive because we have to be proactive because, again, they're playing on our brain's implicit decision-making centers. And so we need to be proactive in protecting our peace. So what does that mean? Go ahead and take a look at your day. If you wake up in the morning and the very first thing you do is bring yourself to the news as an example. And so you're bringing in an imbalance and negativity as, as ideas or energy into your mind and body, you might want to look at that. It might be time to protect your peace. So instead, what you might do is you might take uh, time in the morning before you do that to be able to come into a place of feeling a greater sense of balance in yourself, taking care of your nervous system. Maybe that means going on a walk and listening to some soothing music, or maybe that just means time and quiet, just sipping your tea or coffee or juice whatever it might be, or maybe it means in connection with somebody that's there in your house or an animal that's there. Something that's about, I'm gonna give my nervous system and my body peace first. Then go ahead and pay attention to the news if you want, and then say, how much of the news do I actually wanna pay attention to? At what point does it become overloading to me? And so consider that for a moment. That's just an example of protecting our peace. Or how about the people that we spend time with? When's the last time you've looked at the people you've spent the most time with or the least time with that are in your social orbit and considered, is this person typically nourishing to me, depleting to me, or toxic to me even? And uh, do I need to begin to create more boundaries? Do I need to spend less time with this person because it's really becoming overwhelming to me? Or are there other people in my orbit that I need to spend more time with because they're more nourishing and supportive to me? Or if I can't spend less time with this person, even though they're toxic in some ways, they're not toxic, but the way they engage with me is, is there some way I can relate to them differently that builds up a sense of nourishment within me? In other words, recognizing 
the imbalance that this person might be in because of the way that they're acting and actively seeing from an altruistic lens if I can wish them well to be more at ease, to be more balanced. Because honestly, if they were, they'd probably cease to be the depleting person for you that they are. And also, we know that conjuring up sense of compassion or altruism creates a sense of connection that's there and oftentimes is healthier and feels better than the complaining or the blaming that happens in our mind that that is also very toxic for us. So consider both of those angles or any of those angles. What does it look like to protect your peace? Go ahead and comment below if you can for you. What does it look like today to protect your peace or what would you like to put into action to protect your peace? as well, so we can share in the wisdom of everyone. So now I wanna give you seven things that I think can be also helpful in considering and protecting your peace starting today, starting right now, in the days, weeks, and months ahead. And imagine if you just put these in place or allowed yourself to engage in these throughout time, if you felt better and better at protecting your peace. And so what would happen is naturally you would create more peace in your life. First thing is let go of things you can't control. Consider for a moment when you're worrying about something, what of this do I have control over and what don't I have control over? If you don't have control over it, see if you can shake it off your body, let it go, release, and ask yourself again, what do I have control over and engage the focus in that direction. Also, developing a sense of appreciative awareness or gratitude in our lives can also be a great sense of resiliency. Wherever our focus goes, we invite an energy to flow. And so focusing on what is good in our life or what we appreciate in our life can support a great sense of warmth and resiliency for us. Um, Avoid spaces also that don't feel right. So this could be a physical space or an online space. If this place does not spark joy in you, does not spark um, life-giving energy in you, then I would shift my attention and leave it. Does that mean that if this place has people in it that are struggling, that it's a bad place? No, that could be an opportunity to extend compassion and warm your heart and create a sense of connection. You know when something feels toxic to you and overwhelming to you and when something has an opportunity to be life-giving. The next thing is speak kindly to yourself and to others. It goes a long way to speak kindly to yourself and others. If you're noticing negative, harsh voices, self-critical voices, Again, wherever our focus goes, we invite an energy to flow. And so we're going to feel shame. We're going to feel depressed. We're going to feel anxious. And so we have to be aware of these voices, notice them, see if we can take a deep breath, release, recognize that this is a tough moment right now and refocus on being kinder to ourselves, and make sure we're also doing that with other people. When we're speaking unkindly towards other people, it just reverberates back to us. We don't feel well. Check it out for yourself. You know this for yourself. So speak kind to yourself and others. Also be aware of other people who really drain your energy or who are depleting to you. And ask yourself the question, is there a way that I can spend less time with this person? Or if this is someone I really care about and I really love, how? what's a way I can relate to them differently that can be more life-giving to me? One example of that is in your mind when you're with them, Put yourself in their shoes for a moment and see if you can really wish them well. Have some deep empathy for them or some compassion. Compassion is incomplete unless it includes yourself. So that's the way we can stay more balanced. But say to them, may you be more at ease. May you be feel safe and protected. May you feel healthy in your body and mind. See if you can be a support to them in some way and see if that's more that altruistic and compassion energy becomes more life-giving to you. Also, be aware of your triggers. If there's certain people or certain things that trigger your nervous system, loud music, um, certain really messy environments. We know that can actually trigger our anxiety um, and or whether it's certain people or what, what is your trigger and see if you can make less contact with those triggers. And less on a scale of one to 10, they're like at a four or five and you can use them as an uh, opportunity to create more mastery over your nervous system with them. But the, on, the, on the other hand, them, just kind of see if you can diminish some of those triggers as much as possible. And then finally, uh, and this piggybacks on an earlier one, is just really be aware of your thoughts. Be mindful of your thoughts. These are thoughts that are, again, more that are kind of coming towards you that are full of doubt or blame or comparing yourself to others. Any mind traps. I just did a, a great video on mind traps that I'll... Um, I'll leave for you on the other end here as well. So uh, you can go straight to that one as far as being more mindful of your thoughts. So consider any of those seven. 
and bring them into your life to protect your peace. And this is more important than ever. It's again, it's it seems like it's something that's important, but our mind might say, oh, it's not so urgent. All these other things that are urgent that are coming on my phone, but treat them as urgent. Put them in your calendar, create space for them to be aware of them, to be engaged with them. And what you'll get is more peace in your life. I hope this was supportive to you. If it was, please don't forget to like this video. And also, if you're new here, we have great mental health tips every single week. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell even to be reminded of these to bring them into your life more. And again, if you want to work closer with me, then feel free to check out the link to the Uncover the Power Within program, the Mental Health Accelerator program that is helping so many people right now. I'll look forward to connecting with you and working with you there. And otherwise, I'm going to leave some great videos on the other end here for you to continue to nourish and deepen and make this day, week, and month a better place. Okay, look forward to being with you in the next one.